Hi there, I'm Lisa Capallo. Welcome to Where's Wilmington. You know, you've heard that expression, everything old is new again. Well, that's definitely true here in Wilmington. And today we have the pleasure of having with us Jerry Cabral and he and his partner, Brenda DeLucia, they have taken over Big Joe's Depot. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to pleasure. have you. Thank you. So, you guys probably <clears throat> know of Big Joe's Depot if, you, if you're from Wilmington or if you've ever taken the train, actually. You probably have seen it. But when did you guys actually revamp it and reopen it? We, it was a process that took about six months and we finally opened on September 21st. Wow, 2013. 2013, yeah. So how did you decide Wilmington? Because I know you're from Tewksbury. What made you decide that location? At, uh, at some, uh, we, w talking with Brenda, we were looking to, um, to purchase a place and just to, to do something locally, not right. far away from Tewksbury. So, uh, Big Joe's uh, was available, so we start looking into it and start seeing that probably was a need for commuters to, to kind of have something right. pretty close, and it's literally just on the back of the track. So do a service on the morning with breakfast and then do a lunch and dinner also with dinners to go. So that was the idea. Right. On now, Big Joe's originally, because I've lived here my entire life, it used to be just a little pizza and sub shop. You know, you could get like a slice maybe, but you guys are doing a lot more than that. I, li I like to say that uh, if you take out out of Big Joe's Depot now, it's like bringing home a restaurant taste kind of food. Right. Which is we have, I have a lot of, uh, my background is Portuguese, so I have a lot of Portuguese food in, in, in dinners. And also the menu, it's pretty much everything done fresh and from scratch right. that was, that was my idea, was try to do as much fresh stuff as we can. Right, could. and we're going to show you, uh, when we go to our break, we're going to show you some of the food items and a little bit of the renovations that they've done. One of the things I thought was interesting is you have some very unusual food items for what looked to me like to be a very small place. Uh, you know, Big Joe's used to be just a sub shop, but now you've really turned it into something more continental. You have jasmine rice, you have little neck clams, wow. Yeah, but the, the, the little like clams, it's a, a very uh, traditional Portuguese dish that's made with pork and potatoes. And uh, actually, it's a good seller uh, at Big Joe's. And like I said, I just wanted to kind of put a little bit of my background and the jasmine rice. I worked with it and, and we, have, we have seafood paella, also a Portuguese dish. And um, something being on the healthy side, but still be tasty right. and that people going to enjoy and yes. come back for. So let's talk about your background because you didn't just wake up one day and decide you were going to open your own restaurant, right? No, I uh, I have worked in food service for 21 years since wow. I... I um, since you were born. Arrived, not that no, old. I arrived here. <laughs> I was 18 when uh, I arrived in the United States and I worked my way up on the same company for 21 years Wow. and got to the point that um, I wanted to try something on my own and, and pretty much be my mm -hmm. own boss and, and try to provide a service that I would think would bring a little bit more to a town we didn't know was going to be Wilmington, but right. th when we got it, it, it brings something more to the town than what they had around right, us. Right, because I don't think there are any Portuguese restaurants in Wilmington. Maybe some folks own them that are Portuguese, but I don't know of any. Do you? No, no. I have um, I have a lot of people that come in and and say, oh, thank goodness, I don't have to go to Somerville, Cambridge, right. or Lowell to get some Portuguese dish, which, which is good. Um, and also with with the breakfast and with the quick sandwich that we do in the morning for the commuters with coffee and mm -hmm. muffins that I bake over there. Uh, we open pretty much from 6 a.m. to 9 o'clock at night and wow. I'm there by 5.15 to bake some muffins and uh, it's a big hit with the community so nice. it's it's going good. So you're from Portugal or the Azores? Or? Yeah, I'm originally from St. Marco Azores, yeah. Okay. Uh, so when you were a kid, did you ever think you would come to the United States and open your own restaurant? That's not, that's like the American dream. Yeah, right there. not not a, not on a million years. I, I always um, I, I 
first I never thought that, that I was going to be on the food service because uh, over there I, I always cooked. I still call my mom back in Portugal and ask her for a recipe right. if I'm looking to do something different or we do a lot of catering. Sometimes it's for Portuguese and they want they want the some of the Portuguese. Right? And uh, I call my mom and she goes over with me on the phone about what to do mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So it, it was um, definitely um, something that was not on my view to, to kind of open a restaurant when right. I first arrived. But like you said, it's American dream. I think if you work hard, then things will happen. And you certainly do because you have to be there all the time. It's, we open seven days, seven days a week. Uh, wow. uh, only Sunday we close at three and uh, the rest of the week we open pretty much from six to nine wow. o'clock. Now, and Brenda, your partner, she's there sometimes, but she actually works during the day as well. Right. Brenda is a, a catering manager and uh, she also does a full-time job outside of Big Joe's and then comes at night wow. and helps me. And uh, then when we have catering, she sets it up. She meets with customers and right. try to get a, a feel for what they need. And then we provide the service of catering also. Wow. So what challenges have you had to face? I mean, Okay, so you decide you're going to buy a restaurant, you drive around, you look for a place. Now you find the place. What happens after that? It's, um, it's a big, it's a process that takes a long, long time. Yes. And we, we would not, you never think it's going to take six months to kind of renovate. We I actually thought, thought that was pretty fast when it, you said that. It was fast. I thought it would take three months and that's, and, and it goes back to like, you got to kind of, um, do the whole place over, you bring Permits, up to code. inspectors, right. Health. all of that, yeah. Right, bring everything up to code and make sure you have the equipment that you need. So it was it was a big investment on our part, which I think will pay off. Yes. And um, but but it, it was a long process with with like you said permits and, and right dealing. right and red tape, just things that you don't know are going to happen. And you're still paying rent on the building, and you're waiting to open. Yeah, you're right, smiling. Right, you know what right, I'm talking about. Right, yeah. right. And, and and that's all. That's all. What's a small business goes through. It's it's not just saying I'm going to open a business, but when you have budgets that you have a budget to renovations, you have a budget for permits and you have a budget for marketing. And when you start dipping into every kind of budget, then it start getting scary, but we, right. we got it done and, and we open and um, hopefully we'll be September successful. September 2013. So why didn't you change the name? Um, I, I'm glad you left I've been, it, I've been I've been asked that question a lot. Uh -huh. uh, I didn't know Big Joe that well. People, mm -hmm. I have people that love him, that go in and just say the best things. I have people that don't like him too much. Right. But I, well, I always say either way. You know? I always say you can't please a hundred percent of people all the time. So it's True. it it is what it is. I had a conversation with him, and he, when he was when he was um, really sick, and he used to call me all the time asking me if I was going to be open when I was going to be open. Mm -hmm. And um, he asked me, and he asked me if I would keep the name. And oh. um, he was a man of his word, at least with me dealing with him, nothing went. And um, he, he kept his word on some deals that we had. Yes. And I told him, I told him I would keep the name. I right. would take the pizza and subs out and I will put depot because I also knew there was a depot back on the day. Right. So I wanted to, to put that on and, and I told them I would keep it at least for two years because as far as marketing goes, who does not know Big Joe's and Wilmer? That. Right, that's free advertising. Right, so yeah. so that's that was the story behind of keeping in the name and right. uh, I'm glad I did. Yeah, I'm glad you did too. The only thing I would say is I didn't know that it was primarily Portuguese food you were serving. I assumed before I looked at their Facebook page and before I came down to visit that um, it was not Ameri that it was all American food like subs and pizza, but it's not really. Right, right. I mean, you have those things too. Right, we we do, we do. Our, our main thing is um, actually Brenda just bought something to to put on our menu board. Happiness is homemade. Yes. And um, and and we, I'm proud to to say that I do. 99% of it's from scratch. Talking about anything from burgers to uh, chicken parmesan eggplant. I roast my own turkey. Wow. So it's a lot of things done. I'm there all the time, so I gotta be doing stuff. And right. when when these times that are done before lunch or after lunch, 
I, I like to put stuff together. The idea be, behind um, the dinners was to have dinners to go. Like if you're a commuter that comes from Boston, gives a, give us a call, and uh, by the time you arrive in Wilmington, your dinner will be ready. It's an excellent idea. And um, in a trying to bring back a little bit of what I know and about and give a little bit knowing that people not around didn't have a restaurant that would have feed some Portuguese food around here. Right. I took the idea and I put I put some dishes in. Um, we still at lunchtime we still do calzones and we still do the the, the Big Joe's uh, Italian sub and 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 the biggest thing that I did with the place was to have an open kitchen right. so people can see me cook. Right. Um, I, I want people to kind of, you have, people have to trust you on your cook and I'm all, yes. all about safety and, and health and all, all that stuff that comes with it. So w the, the menu pretty much is, is all done by scratch. Right. And it's, it's like watching a show while you're there. You get to see you cook and I, do all your flipping and some of the pictures we're going to show, I think one of them is of you cooking in your facility. Now you're not doing this all by yourself because we have one of the pictures we're going to show in a minute to you folks at home. Um, you have a crew of folks that work for you because you can't do it all alone. Yeah, mo most time, most time, most time, like I said, Brenda has a full time, so most time I'm there. Uh, Brenda is at work and she comes in help. We have, uh, between me and her, we have five kids, so they come in, they help washing dishes or Good. cleaning up around. That's great. Trying to get them to, to, to do a little bit, uh, to have a little bit of responsibility. Yes. So they come in and help. Mo mostly it's me, I'm there all day, and, and I have people, we, you were just saying about the people looking at me cooking. Yes. I have, uh, I, I, I get a kick out of people, for example, more than once people come in, and they say, I want a chicken parmesan. I said, OK. So I grab my fresh chicken. I grab the bread, the eggs. And he's looking at me. He's like, is that for me? I said, uh, yeah, that's the way I cook. He's nice. like, I never saw nobody go and bread and my chicken to do a chicken. So that's the difference. You have to be different to be successful. Right. That's the way I see it. It's If you're going to open a pizza place, you're going to be among a lot of other pizza right. places, so right. that, and that was the idea behind. Excellent. Well, we're going to take our midpoint break here, and while we do that, we're going to show you some pictures of Big Joe's Depot, some of the things that uh, Brenda DeLucia and Jerry Cabral have done to change it up a little bit. The name is still the same, pretty much. We added Depot to it, but uh, it's definitely a different facility. So we're going to take a look at some food, some of the crew, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more to Jerry Cabral about Big Joe's Depot. So stay right there. We'll be right back with more of Where's Wilmington. Part two, Where's Wilmington? Coming down three, two, one. Can you explain the demographics for Yep. Anything um, we're not mentioning? I have a few other things I can ask you. Are you thinking of anything in particular while he sets? No, no. Okay. okay. Coming down in three, two, one. One. Welcome back to Where's Wilmington. I bet you're starving after seeing all those great photos of Jerry and his family and some friends cooking some marvelous Portuguese stuff. Now, what would you say to somebody who said, oh, Portuguese, what does that taste like? I've never had that. I myself have had linguiça, and I know there's a lot of sauces that tend to go with your cuisine. So can you tell us a little bit about what Portuguese food is like and how it's really based, what kind of uh, herbs and spices or different tastes if you've never had it before? It's, it's a very simple cu cuisine. You, um, the one thing that we do is marinate pretty much everything. Okay. So if you marinate the day before, by the time you cook the following day, it's, the taste, it's on, a, it's, on, it's on a beef. For example, I have on the menu for lunch, I have the Portuguese steak, which is a piece of steak, but it's marinated and a little bit of white wine, crushed red pepper, mm. fresh garlic, olive oil, and you let that sit for one, two days and then cook. Um, it, the taste, it just, it, it's, it's just not too heavy, but it's a taste that it, it, the, the palate will come through as far as uh, really tasty and finished. Okay. Uh, I finished the sub also. That sub I finished with lettuce and tomatoes and a little bit of mayo and hot, mm. so it Yum. really has a kick on. Now, is this eaten? Your facility, because I saw you have a few little areas 
can people dine in there or is it pretty much kind of to go where you can hang out a little bit it, it's mostly it's mostly take out i have the commuters on the morning they like to to sit on the stools that i have there and have the coffee just wait for the train to come mm -hmm. and uh but i have some people that have dining in but um i uh, the bulk i would say would to take out okay and how's the catering end doing i know brenda's not here to talk to us about that the, the catering is going pretty good we actually have done cater cater other than our, uh, we had both two full-time jobs and right. uh, on the weekends for the last probably six, seven years, we did a lot of catering, anything from uh, New Year's Eve to, right. to baptisms, communions, anything we do. And it's going, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I can put my name behind the catering brand also does. And now that we have a facility that we can cook and we don't have to go out and rent uh, a kitchen out. So that, that, that makes it better because we have everything together as far as the food and all the stock. Right. So it makes things easier to run. Right. And you both have been in the food industry and have known each other for a really long time. Yeah, me and Brenda, uh, professionally, we, we know for the last eight years, and um, I, between both of us, we have almost 27 years of wow. food service experience. So what things did you see in your other positions that you said, I won't do that in my restaurant? What did you learn that you said, my restaurant's gonna be different? Um, Sometimes, sometimes it's everything is on a rush and everything is done fast and fast food and that goes back to my main idea was do as minimum as I can of, of frozen products and products that are not fresh. So we, we, we like to have mostly on, on, we worked on schools, we worked on private schools okay. on the company. So it's a lot of that food that's, you know, you throw, take it out of the freezer right. and you fry Kid it. Kid friendly. Kid friendly stuff. And, uh, and on the same schools, we used to do uh, catering for presidents and vice presidents. So it, it, it changed back. And some things, the caterings that I still do mm -hmm. because it was good products like having different uh, we did one that was different bar. We had a mashed potato bar on a Ooh. martini glass and uh, we had all the, the condiments around and we have a tuna bar and a pasta bar mm -hmm. so people can just walk around. So that kind of, uh, that kind of function, we, we took a lot from it, but um, mainly was do as fresh as we could and homemade. Okay. Now, we've talked a lot about sort of meat and fish and vegetables. How about fresh bread and pastry? Because I know Portuguese bakeries are famous for the out of this world pastries and breads. That that's on uh, like they say on a pipeline. Uh, I, that's I, your wish I, list. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do bake some uh, uh, Portuguese uh, sweets. I do. I do. And and if you go to our Facebook, you will see yep. some of the pictures that I do. And the bread is is a big one. It's uh, a little bit of more investment. Uh, you gotta get a mixer, you gotta get an oven, right. but it's something that even the sweet bread, it's something that, that uh, it's, it's on the back of my mind. Right, it's good stuff. Where do you get all of your fresh produce? Do you, like a, you know, do you go early in the morning to a market? Now you're saying you're in the store at 515. So when do you have time to do all this? For example, uh, s most times uh, Brenda will go after work and we, we purchase stuff done on Avert, on a, mm -hmm. it's called Restaurant Depot. We purchase stuff like uh, yesterday, I got up at four. I was out of the house by 4.15, was done oh on Lord. Avert at five o'clock. They opened at five, I grabbed my stuff, came back. I was back at the shop a quarter of six, so I still opened oh at six. Oh my Lord, and you're still smiling. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you love what you do. That's yeah, good. that's the thing. Sometimes uh, it's it's work, but when you love when you do, it just becomes routine. It just It's just right. life happening. Right. How did you decide, or how do you decide what gets on the menu and what doesn't? Um, I mean, do you sit down and kind of figure out what you would like on there? How do you really make that work? Especially where you're doing some traditional Portuguese dishes and also some American dishes too. That must have been fun to figure that out. Yeah, it was, uh, depends, fun, Challenging, stressful. right? Yeah, yeah. challenging. Every day we had, like I had so many Portuguese dishes and, and what I'm doing now is we start with the base menu and now moving forward, see what sells, what doesn't sell, let's replace. And right. the, all, the other thing is, as the year goes by from winter 
to spring to summer, I want to move with the stage. I want to do become right. like on on do special salads for spring and 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 summer. Um, I want to do. Um, homemade ice cream Ooh. that I have a, a, a chef that's a friend of mine, a Sicilian chef, that he said, I, I'm there to help you out and nice. do some ice cream for the summer. So different things that I want to do as we move throughout the year. Right. But as you said earlier, you can't please everyone. So if you take something off, somebody's going to want it back on. Or I'm sure some of your Portuguese friends are saying, why isn't this particular thing on there? You know. Yeah, the the um, the, the linguista rolls that you also pictures on Facebook. Yep. I, it was just a special. It's kind of come and become an on, on like every a day. Item. Yeah, every yeah. day on a menu because I have people that call me. Are you you have that today? And I'm like, I don't, but I can make it. Oh. So and that's and that's the thing that I do. I have uh, one customer that comes in. And um, he wants to try new stuff. So I said, okay, I can make you stir fry beef. As long as I have in house, wow. I can make it. I, so I, it's like having your own personal chef right. Right before you hop on the train. Right. He, he, li he, he likes different stuff. So I, we, anything from buffalo wrap to Caesar. And, and it, it just, and if he has something that he wants that it's not on a menu, as long as I have the product in right. house. I can suggest to him, and he would have taken it most times. Now, it's do you find that um, some of your Portuguese dishes are made differently because of the region you lived in? What I'm getting at is some parts of Italy serve their pasta differently than others. Do you find that you make it in a different style from where you were from? Um, no, I it's uh, all the same. most most of uh, most of the dishes that I have that uh, that I have uh, at Big Joe's are traditional dishes like we have the kale soup which is the soup every day we have the soup of the day but kale soup we have a, um, uh, every day of the week and um, uh, every other on the menu every other item on the menu it is um, it's traditional Good. it's it's as close as it can be with you know I, I will go to a Portuguese stores and and get the the the, the pepper okay. the cross red so pepper. it's authentic so it's and your mother would be upset if it wasn't right right yes. so she, I still talk to her and she still gives me some advice on on, on recipes and right. it's funny to put into action what she tells me all over the right. phone like uh, on a different country so it's 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 good to to, to and it's good to have that support right, too. right excellent so as far as the pricing goes is, would you say that you know it's difficult to keep the price point reasonable because you are going fresh or do you find that it can still be the same um, it can be the same and uh, uh, you you probably don't make as much but when you provide a service that people are going to come back for the food, then right. later on you can see how it is. Like we have the dinners, dinners for two, and we have stick tips for two for $20, which comes with wow. roasted potatoes, a side salad, dinner rolls, and, um, and, and the stick tips. Uh, and a vegetable, a grilled vegetable. So if you look at it and you say twenty bucks, it's right. a no-brainer. You take it home and it's perfect. And 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 you and can fresh. most of the times, and, and and most of the times, that's the feedback that I get from people that take. They come back and they say, oh, that was delicious. Um, and and the month was just right for two people. Okay, so you're keeping the price point reasonable, knowing that hopefully volume will be your way. You'll make it on the right, back end. Right. Right. Okay. Right. So what do you think is next for you guys down there? Have you thought about maybe teaching some cooking classes? Because I think watching you make that chicken palm, I would want to learn to do it myself. It, it's some. It, it's something that also we we thought about it. We spoke about it. Say at some time on a Saturday or on a Sunday, we can right. have a bunch of people to come in and and the, the idea behind of expanding our catering to do some catering nice appetizers that people can have and, and help and that kind of yes. thing so that's something that's that's the whole, the whole idea about having an open kitchen and right. seeing people I mean you've cooking. only been open for four months now so I'm kind of pushing you a little bit right, with that right. but I was curious because I think when people see you cook they're going to want to learn all your secrets but you'll keep some for yourself I, I'm usually uh, sometimes uh, Brenda will look at me. I'm like, you just give the whole recipe. I said, <laughs> I don't. I put it together. Yeah, and you know so what? Your love and your energy goes into that, and right. that's unique to you. Right. So. Right. So I don't mind like a lot of people like what's different from. Uh, 
Portuguese steak and a regular steak. I'm like, it's not just shaved beef. It's it's a, a, a steak, and you just the way you marinate, it, and then right. I go through, and they look at me. Once they hear a little bit of white wine, the eyes just kind yes, of pops yes. up. And so we would love that. Anything else you'd like us to know before we send you back to the store so you can make some great stuff? Uh, no, if uh, just to come down and try us out, right. give us a chance, and um, we we very easy going. We like to talk. I like to. Uh, one of the other ideas of having the open kitchen was relationship with yes. people. You develop the relationship. I have, I have people that go in every morning and sit down and. We talk for 20 minutes and then they go on their way That's to nice. work and I stay. So uh, develop relationship with people. Just give us a chance and come out and try Excellent. some food. And you are open what hours so we can make sure people know? We open uh, seven days a week. We open during the week from um, 6 to 9. 6 a.m. to 9, 9 p.m. Wow. Uh, on Saturday, we open from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. And on Sunday, we open from 8 to 3 Okay. 8 and then at 3.30 you go home and take a nap, right? Right, right. <laughs> it was one, was one uh, we, we, we do that and that the, the main reason was we, we wanted to meet it to Yes, mass. you have some time. Yeah, no. You need some time for yourselves, right. you know. Right. Well, thank you so much, Jerry, for being with it. us. I, I'm glad you were here. It was Appreciated great to meet you. Appreciated the opportunity. Ya. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Well, get yourself down to Joe's Depot. Joe's, Big Joe's Depot. Check it out. Um, you know where it is. It's right next to, right next to the train station there in Wilmington. And I just want to remind you that you're watching Where's Wilmington. The next time somebody asks you Where's Wilmington, you say right here and right here on WCTV. We'll see you next time.